Um, our first speaker, uh, first I want to mention uh, Fall Creek Nursery that has sponsored this room um, and uh, that they, they make this event possible. So let's, let's thank them. Uh, our first speaker is Pat Moore. He's going to talk about small fruit breeding at WSU Puyallup. Sure. Okay. I really. Okay, there's a few of us here at least. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Um, Going to talk about the breeding program <laughs> at Puyallup. Um, cooperators are Chad and, and uh, Michael, and then of course Bob Martin is involved in things with uh, viruses. Um, and always. Make sure I mention the financial support. Um, as again, as Bob Martin says, those that pay the write the checks. So, um, just give a few comments about strawberries. This is a picture of uh, Puget Crimson, um, and it's the most recent one we've released from my program. It's uh, large fruited, uh, very good flavor. Um, productive for us, it's on the late side. Um, so it is pretty much strictly a fresh market one. But the objectives for the short day breeding program would be flavor, color, and firmness, and of course the, the productivity of the yield. Uh, we want something that's disease resistance and large, easily harvested fruit. And the objective would be for either for processing or, or fresh market. Um, we've had a number of selections this last year that maybe were very large, others that were very firm, others that were very productive, and others with good flavor. But to combine all those into one, we, we're not there yet. So these are basically parental materials at this time. Uh, I mentioned at the bottom there, promising selections made in 2014. There was one cross I made in 2013 or 12, planted in 2013, and I made 12 selections out of 70 seedlings, which considering I normally select about 1%, that's an awful lot. Um, so they're very promising. They were planted in 2014, we'll be harvesting, or 2015, we'll be harvesting next year. And I'm hopeful that there'll be something that looks good in small plots with this one. We have started a day neutral uh, breeding program. Uh, objectives, this would be for fresh market, flavor, color, firmness, high yields, this sounds familiar, um, disease resistant, large, um, easily harvested fruit, and then the other thing is, is consistent production through the, the season. And we're, we're trying to grow it more or less like a commercial grower would do, grow a day neutral on plastic, raised beds, plastic, um, planted either, we've we're moving to, to planting in this, what, spring? Spring planting, fall, fall planting. Um, this last summer, they measured the yield each week. And you can see that there's some real peaks and valleys um, where this time of year, there's very little production from some, for most of them. Uh, the one that's a solid blue line drops to zero for a couple weeks at least. Um, whereas there are some that may, ha may not have the highest yields, but they seem to be a little bit more consistent through the summer. And that's what we're trying to do is to come up with some, some that are more consistent through the, the season. Um, the next step would be to put them out in selection trials so we can actually get some yield on more than a single plant um, and also to involve uh, feedback from uh, fresh market growers. Each year since for strawberries since 1985, we've collected uh, plant sales from the nurseries. They've been very willing to cooperate and provide us with that information. Um, so you can see the black line is the total, total plant sales in the Oregon, Washington, and BC. The red is Washington, the green is um, Oregon, and the blue is, is BC. Um, and it's been a steady decline in the total number. Uh, Oregon um, has 
declined and then leveled off for a while. And now it looks like they've started to, de to decline again. And uh, Washington and BC has been fairly flat recent recently. The, over the, the region, um, Albion this year was the number one selling plant variety. Uh, Tillamook was the number two, and then it drops down a bit, and you have Totem and, and Hood as the next. And those four have been consistently the group for the top four. If you look at it by uh, state, Oregon, um, Tillamook is the leading one, followed by uh, Totem, Hood, and then Albion. In Washington, it's really not a whole lot of difference between Albion, Hood, and Totem, and then Tillamook is significantly lower. And then in BC, it's Albion, and then a little bit of Rainier, uh, Puget Reliance, and Seascape. And okay, I'll try to avoid doing that again. Um, and thanks to the nurseries for, for being willing to share this information. For raspberries, uh, the breeding goals are flavor, firmness, color, and it has to be machine harvestable. Uh, high yield RBDV resistant would be desirable, but nowadays it may not need to be RBDV resistant. We may want to shift more to breeding for tolerance to where maybe it gets infected but doesn't show symptoms or at least not severe symptoms. Uh, root rot tolerant would be very good, and then we'd like to breed for IQF quality. And here's a picture of the four um, raspberries that were planted in the 2012 grower trial that um, Tom Pierbolt put together. Uh, the first one is uh, 1507 in the upper left corner, and that was released as uh, Puget uh, Harvest, or excuse me, Cascade Harvest run raspberries. Um, the one in the upper right corner is Rudy, which was released in BC um, and just hasn't been had at that time hadn't been tried a whole lot. And the bottom left is uh, 1912, and that's one that, that we're, we were evaluating. And then the bottom right is 1948. And so here's a closer up picture of Cascade Harvest. Um, and it's Cascade Dawn crossed with 1145. And this is machine harvested fruit in, the, in that flat. And it's machine harvestable. It probably would work for either uh, processing or fresh. Uh, for us, it's had high yields. Root rot tolerant, well, the first trial we had on that, it was very root rot to tolerant in that part of the field. Um, we had some real wet years and a lot more root rot pressure, and it did have problems with root rot. And I guess in some of the uh, grower trials, there's been problems with root rot, scattered um, problems with that. So it's not as tolerant as I'd hoped it was, but I think it's still better than a lot of the, most of the rest of the cultivars that are out there. There's not much to choose from if you're looking for root rot tolerance. Um, it has good flavor. Um, the color might be a little bit on the light side, but it, it's probably still acceptable. 1912, um, it's also machine harvest very well. It has good flavor, uh, good fruit quality, and root rot tolerant. Um, it's a bit on the late season. It's small fruit, uh, fruited. It has a significant amount of uh, fall fruit, and so that probably detracts from the yield um, the next summer. And um, the question on this one is whether or not there's enough yield to make it commercially viable. Um, when we had a meeting in Portland, was it last year or the year before, where we had a bunch of chefs in there, um, we had puree made of these and it was tasted. And that was one that had, was liked by many more than anything else. Um, it, was, it was, the flavor was very, very good. So the fruit quality is there, it's just a question of yield. And it machines well. 1948, um, that was the, the there's a lot of questions there, and basically, flavor um, knocks it out for, for this one. But we needed to get it in larger plantings before we could figure out that. There was another grower trial that went in in 2014 last year. We haven't 
most of the fields have not been harvested yet. Um, so we don't really know um, for sure how all of these are gonna do. Uh, the first one in the upper left corner is WCU 1980. Uh, firm fruited, a bit on the late side. Um, very, very good fruit quality. However, it is susceptible to bushy dwarf and it goes crumbly when it gets bushy dwarf. So at least up here, that's not going to be a good uh, fit because of the, the crumbly fruit with the, and the RBDV pressure we have up here. Uh, the one in the upper right is WCU2122. Um, it's dark fruited. Um, we've only had it in uh, planting it at uh, Randy Honkoops before. Um, it was very productive for us. It was very high in sugars, very high in titratable acidity, and high in anthocyanins. So that com and it was firm. So that combination should work pretty well for a processing berry. Um, but again, we should have quite a bit of fruit of this next summer, and we should get a much better read on it. The bottom two are 2166 and 2188. They were both selected in a planting we had of seedlings at Sukuma Brothers a few years ago. And they, the, these selections were selected from those seedlings from the top of the machine. Um, and they do machine well. Um, again, we don't know a whole lot on the disease resistance or, or the yield on these, but the, the fruit quality is, is very nice. Okay, um, now we are hoping to put in another uh, grower trial, probably not this coming year. Um, one of the problems is enough time to propagate up enough plants. Um, so it'll probably be 2017, is that what you're figuring, 2017. Um, these are possibilities that, that, that's not cast in stone at this part. Um, 1914 has the same parents as 1912. Um, it shares a lot of the traits. It's root rot resistant. Um, a bit larger fruit size than 1912. Uh, machine harvests very well, has good flavor. Um, it also produces some fall fruit. Uh, and there's also some question on the yield on this one. So, again, we'll probably have to have it out in a larger plot before we can really tell if the yield is going to make it or not. Uh, the uh, one in the upper right is uh, WCU 1962. Um, it's been tried at, at uh, Randy Honkoops twice. Um, it looked good the first time, and we put it in a second time and evaluated it then. Um, this last summer, we harvested in... Um, machine harvesting plots at um, Mayberries. And um, Tom Shalin made evaluations during the season and that was about the highest rated one he had and it was one of the highest yielding ones. Um, so that, that has possibilities and we'd like to put that out into grower trials. Uh, 2010 um, looked very good at Enfields. Um, not as good at Mayberries or at Puyallup. So we're not quite sure what's going on with the site. Um, with that, it may be root rot or something else. Um, but that's one that does, um, has performed well on, a, on some sites. The one in the bottom right corner is 2162. And that's one that looked very, very good at, um, at uh, uh, Randy Honkoops and has very good flavor. Uh, Shimanus is one of its parents, and a WSU selection, the other one. Um, so we're, we're hope it comes off very well, um, good color, good flavor. Um, so we're hopeful on, on that one. Um, okay. So with that, I'll move on to the plant sales information. Um, bit of a roller coaster on raspberry plant sales, um, where it went up to into about. 2004, 2005, and then dropped and then went up again. And now it's starting to come back up, I hope. Um, the red line is, is Washington. The blue line is BC. The, the green line is Oregon. Um, and 
back in 2001 when we started, there were similar plant sales for both or, uh, Washington and BC. And since then, Washington has gone up, BC has gone down a bit. Um, Meek, overall, Meeker is the leading seller in, in the Pacific Northwest um, with a bit over 35% of the total. Uh, Wakefield is a close second. And then Chimanus is, is a third, um, quite a bit less. And then Cascade Harvest, with its first year sales, um, was very high for, for an initial uh, sale. Um, again, breaking it down by state, um, in Oregon, Meeker was the leading one with over 35%, then Cascade Harvest, and then Tulamine and Wakefield. Um, this is one of the few, is this, they, they, they've had Wakefield down there before or not? Yeah, it might, okay, might be the second year on Wakefield. Um, Washington. Uh, Wakefield is actually higher than, than Meeker in Washington with over 45% of the total plant sales. Uh, and Meeker is hanging in there at about 35%. Um, then Shimanus and Cascade Harvest are very low um, in Washington um, for three and four. So it's basically Wakefield and Meeker in, in Washington. And in BC, uh, number one is uh, Meeker, number two is Shimanus. And then again, dropping way down, Wakefield and Cascade Delight as, as the last. Um, that you can see that in BC, it's a different group of, of cultivars, and that to some extent, and, and it's market driven. Um, and then again, I want to thank the, the propagators for providing the plant sales information. And uh, any questions? Any questions for Pat? <laughs>